Hi everybody, we are in the garden of the artist who's being featured today and we're just going to go down the path to meet them and look at their studio. So I'm going to flip this around if I can and we're going to wander down here. Some evidence of kids here, maybe grandkids. Uh, down this little path to here and here's the studio straight in front of us and we're going to go down there and meet our artist. all that time trying to put on ah. the radio. Oh, did you? Hi, it's Carmel. <laughs> Hello, Carmel, how are you? Hi, Alan. Great. I'll turn this, this off. Okay, all right. I won't spend it on turning it off as I did. <laughs> turning it on. Right, so here we are in Carmel Mooney's studio, but I gather it's just one of your studios, so do you want to give us a little tour of the studio and tell us about... <laughs> My summer one studio. One of your studios, your summer <laughs> studio. Okay, all right. Yeah. yeah. Well, yes, because I can only paint something relatively small here. Mm -hmm. The biggest is the one on the wall. That's that's the largest one I could paint here. And okay. now when I take that off the wall, I, I'd have to take that off to put another canvas up, pin it up there. Yes. And then, and then I but can't go ahead with anything no, else. No, but I mean, this, that, that, this one here, did you do that one here? Because that's, that's, that's well, probably bigger. No, no, not at all. You no? couldn't, how could I? No. I thought you might have done it straight on the wall there. Oh no, no, okay. no! You see, to do to paint it on the wall, mm -hmm. you have to. Well, I have to have have it off the stretchers. Yes. And and. Oh then, right, yeah, yeah. You see, this one here is pinned. To, it's pinned to the wall. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, well, I suppose you could uh, have it on stretchers, but then it's moving while you're painting. And, and is that the, the way you would normally paint? On, 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 you know, canvas, canvas the, on, no, not stretched. No, no, normally no. I paint, normally. Okay. I put that on an easel. Yes, yes. That's stretched and ready to go. This yeah. is an awful nuisance because you paint this way because you have to then, uh, at a certain stage before I, I wouldn't do a lot of texture and then mm. try to roll that up and get it put on stretchers. Yeah. yeah. I'd stop at a certain stage, okay. which is about now with that. Yes. And t take it over to Kennedy's and they'll put it on stretches for me and then I'll take it back and finish it. All right, okay. But it's a roundabout way of painting a very large painting, but still yes. the way I have, except in the other studio I have mm -hmm. across the city. Yeah. It's a tiny little cottage and you could, all, you could put your hand up as far as the roof if you were standing on the path. Mm -hmm. But inside it has a really high ceiling. Yes. So I'm able to put a, I'm able to put a big canvas there. Mm -hmm. A big that that would need two easels, a big canvas, and sure. um, yeah. and work there on the big stuff. So all mm -hmm. those big ones that you can see, yeah, amongst all the clutter, all, all those were painted over in my studio on Maxwell Street. Oh, were they? All oh, right, okay. <coughs> and I need a. Uh, if that's on the studio, mm. I need to be able to get up to the top of it, so I have to have a step. Really? Do you? Yeah. Yes, yes. And then, uh, it was funny really, there's a little shop there, a, little, a tiny little shop, and the man in it, I would stop sometimes and get things on my way home. Mm -hmm. Things like potatoes and still some things. But um, he'd, he'd ask me what I was doing. And I'd tell him, and he said, oh, you have to mind yourself. I thought it was so nice of him to be worried about me. Yeah. Uh, you have to mind yourself. He said, you could step off the step. Yes, of course. Yeah. And there there you are on your own. Yeah. yeah. So the next day uh, I was in with him, he had this big foam cushion that he had gone down to Dame Street yeah. and got it for me. Really? And to put behind the step. So <laughs> to break the fall. Wouldn't, bre <laughs> wouldn't break my head altogether. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. So, Carmen, before, before we kind of go into your career and the various stages you've gone through uh, and, and your work and, and the fact that you work in glass or have worked in glass as well, can you just give us a quick tour of this, one of your studios, um, just to show us Are you where, where is yes, of course I am. <laughs> just shows your workstation. Um, you know, My, I know it's around the corner well, I here. I don't have a workstation mm. in any any place else. Yes. This is only this. The workstation is a major luxury, and it's new. Mm -hmm. uh, that Douglas put together for me. Okay, this is your son Douglas, yeah. My son Douglas, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. who's the designer really. Yeah. 
and he put this together and it's got it's got a place for everything you'd need you know old painting rags mm -hmm. storage there yes more paints here so you have it all to hand and a pull out there that you might or might not use mm -hmm. and then there's a, a roller thing for paper oh yes yeah. um mm -hmm. so you can you have enough space you could put a table easel there yep. that easel is on the floor over there you could put that so all you right. can paint a smallish or not so small painting mm -hmm. on that and mm -hmm. have all the stuff there so that's ideal okay. i wish i'd had that when the kids were small and you were mm -hmm. kind of running all over the place i still am running all over the place when <laughs> the kids are not small but anyway i know yeah yeah excellent you know, so in the in the winter goes with uh, an awful lot of clutter goes with oil painting and all you know cleaning yeah. and trying to brushes and all mm -hmm. that it, it, it takes up a lot of space if ever i'm talking to people and in the past when i used to do a lot of talks first thing i would say i think mm -hmm. have you a space to paint yes no i said so it's the corner of this sink drainer or something mm -hmm. you're trying to mm -hmm. produce the painting and it, it's a terribly you know, it seems like a nothing point, but mm. it means everything. Of course. If you don't have a place you can walk away from, and that's I know. where that but that's, is right. I mean, that, that is quite small, you know, relative to the sort of work you do and, and, and the size of the room here. You know, that, that could fit into the corner of a kitchen. I know. That's if the necessary. point. You could yeah. pull that out. If yeah. you were, I used to paint at night, but mm. I, I had this place I'd come down. But you could, if you were stuck and had no place, you could pull this out mm -hmm. and you could work on that. Yeah. You'd be limited, but you know, you're not going to get everything. No, of course not. No. And you're lucky to have a space at all. And as as there are people now and they're struggling with, um, you know, breathe as one, where mm -hmm. is she paint? Yes. Nobody wants oil paints around, mm. you know, true. the house. Well, funny you should say that because... Um, Last week we visited an artist, uh, Owen McLaughlin, and he's actually stopped painting in oils, and he's yeah. painting in watercolor only now, just for yeah. the sort of. But it's dictated by circumstances, mm. you know. You, well, you, you you have to compromise, of course. But yeah. you, you, if you're going to compromise too much in painting, you might as well do something else because mm. it takes your freedom away. Yeah, that's the point. It just does. Yeah. Like and that's what I'd be. I don't work from sketches, mm -hmm. but that bird you see on the wall there. Yes. That's what I would bring to when I'm going to work in the furnace in in Venice. Um, yeah. Well, we'll talk a lot more about that, and I think we're also going to show a video um, of your time there, and the the, the actual operation of creating yeah. these works in, in in the furnace and so on. So that's going to be quite interesting. But the sketches mm. have to be fairly exact. Okay, and they have to be in um, Italian. Well, I, I notice there's not a English. The guys in the furnace yeah. don't know any English. They sure don't. No, they don't no. know any English, yeah. um, and they speak Venetian anyway. Mm -hmm. But but Italian Venetian. Sure. Yeah, it's it, yes. I I write the, the, it up in there. It's easy. Just yeah, of course. Yeah, you need to do that. All right, Carmen. Shall we go inside and carry on? The conversation uh yeah we yeah will. okay Whatever. these are absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful and we must talk about about these because i know these have resulted in in um travels extensive travels uh to volcanic areas no these are all these are all uh, sicily oh sicily yeah yeah, yeah okay all these yeah. that you see here that big mm. one that you can't see right yeah that, just in here yeah that and i can't even get no don't worry it. don't worry no, uh, that's uh, one of the big craters in, I'll show you the image of it, in uh, Lanzarote. Yeah. But the the uh, craters in the area in Lanzarote is no live lava or anything. It, mm -hmm. There hasn't been for a while. It's not extinct. Uh, a volcano isn't regarded as extinct for about, I think it's 300 years. Is it? Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the ground is still hot in parts of Lanzarote. Oh, I, I, I've been there where they put the water down and it gushes up. That's right. But heat. if you go around to the back of the big mm -hmm. crater where you're not supposed to go, but the guide, the so-called guide, he was only a, a guy with a car for her, mm -hmm. but he sold himself off to me as a guide. Yes. <laughs> and he went around the back and so did I. Did he? And I got great, um, I got, you know, great sketches there. Yes. But, uh, but uh, the ground was hot around there, I suppose. That's why they don't... Uh, 
They don't bring the tourists around that much. No, no but it hasn't blown up yeah. for an no. awfully long time. But then volcanoes are completely unpredictable. Yes, so yes. You don't know. Yeah. Okay. But, but I mean, this is the edge. This is the edge of the crater. That, looking down over that is absolutely magnificent. You can't see because... Mm -hmm. But looking down into it, I have I have a couple of the edge. I'll show them to you. They're smaller ones, but it's amazing the color and the steam. And yes, it's, it's blue. It's it's dazzling white, and then it's red and orange, and you've got all those colors. Uh, sort of this this kind of thing. Yes, mm -hmm. and they're so vibrant, aren't they? It's quite amazing to look down over that, and and it's. You, you're almost hypnotised, you mm, know. Mm, mm. It's yeah. like when you look over the edge of a cliff. Yes. <laughs> you're you're hypnotised by it. Wonderful. Okay. Well, I mean, you wouldn't, I wouldn't paint. People, somebody thought that you'd bring your paints and go, not at all. No, on plan air painting <laughs> at the edge of it. No, no I, I no. that's where I, the first time I went to a volcanic landscape, I, I was laden down with colour and paint and, Bit by bit by bit, I slimmed it down, and you know, you really only need three colours yes. red, yellow, blue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mix what you want after that. Yeah. But um, you couldn't paint there because the wind, the climate is such that you, could, you can hardly hold a sketchbook sometimes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You know, the Very paints windy. would get ripped off. If I'm going to make a sketch there, I'd have to. I'd have to. This is the paper. I'd have mm -hmm. to pin it down. Then I'd have to seal it with tape because mm -hmm. the wind would come in through anything and rip it out of your hand. Uh, so, you know. Yes. Yeah. But then when you get to know an area quite well, I mean, I've been, going, I've been painting land, uh, volcanic landscape for 20 years. Yes. So mm -hmm. unless I went to a different landscape, if I went to a different landscape now, mm -hmm. yes, it would be new, but not that new because it's the same color largely mm, yeah yeah magnificent but you know and I has your glass work been inspired by um your visits to, to these volcanic areas i don't know i never know what mm. what happens where but yeah. all i know is why did i go from a live volcano to the furnace yes exactly that's a good question i don't know yeah <laughs> i don't know like Subconscious, both maybe. awful mm. conditions yes yeah well i'd say the heat now and in there never mind where you are in, in Venice, but um, the heat must be extraordinary in the furnaces. On the furnace, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's pretty, it's pretty, um, it's pretty hard. Mm -hmm. But then the man, the, that big painting got, look, yeah. that was missing. Did it? Yeah. It was going from, it was the International Exhibition in Waterford. Mm -hmm. That was the counterpart to this. Okay. And was my own fault when missing because when I when I had when the stuff was delivered to me I didn't open the packaging. And, oh. and then some company asked me for the loan of a big painting to impress some visiting person and I opened the package and there was only one painting in it. That was the only one. So the other one was lifted out of the packaging and closed up again. Yeah. It was a, an international festival. Mm. And it was travelling, so right. yeah. mine travelled. But there's a there's supposed to be a market in advance for paintings that are stolen. That they they go out of the country. Yeah, that's that sort of flattery you don't need. <laughs> I know I don't. <laughs> great. I, I do not. All right, listen, Carla, that's great. Let's let's leave it there, and we'll go we'll go inside and have a chat. Okay. But uh, thanks for showing us around your studio or one of your studios. But that's uh, that was yeah. on the wall, by the way. That, mm. that is, as I said, the beginning of a painting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the beginning of a painting. So even if I wanted to make a bigger one, which I don't, that that's the new eruption last January. Okay. Yes. And it's a new, it's new colouring as well. I can't quite make up my mm. mind what I'll do with it next because it's. Um, it's lighter altogether. It's not these big. No. Uh, it's lighter because the place was covered in snow. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. And the snow on the mountain, and um, and it had instead of having um, the top of the mountain. Uh, the point, 
-hmm. It obviously got blown off and you had this, these curves and counter curves and you build up again, of yes. course. Yes. Yeah. And tell me, do, do you have a particular favourite time to paint? You know, are you a morning person, an evening person? Or does morning, it vary? Definitely not. I have to defrost <laughs> my brain in the morning. Do you? Okay. No, I'd never... No, I well, you see, I got used to having when the children were small, you painted when you could. Yeah. You yes. Know? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And and yeah. um. Uh, no, mostly I'd pa I used to when I had regular painting hours, insofar as you can have, I used to paint across the middle of the day. You know, maybe mm. I'd start say about this time, whatever it is, in the day, and then paint across till about. Well, depending on. Mm. Sometimes I'd continue on to really late at night. Sometimes I'd start late at night. Mm -hmm. But if you're painting at night, then you have to adjust your colours for... Yes, yes, of course, yes. I learned yeah. how to do that when mm -hmm. I was in NCAD because they had, at the time, uh, fluorescent tubes, mm -hmm. which really... I still hate them. But you, ha you learn to adjust um, your colour because yeah. the blues and yellows particularly will just change their they're all lithographs yeah. imagine yes yeah okay let's leave it there Carmel and we go inside have a cup of tea and continue our chat okay <laughs> it's a chat I've chatted all I've told you all I know no you haven't <laughs> <laughs> okay Okay, so um, at this stage now, I'm in uh, Carmel's house. She's in another room in the, in the back room in the conservatory, and I'm here in the front room. And that's really to avoid any of the feedback and distortion of sound. Um, otherwise, we'd be wearing earphones and all that sort of stuff. It looks awful uh, if you can avoid it. So that's where we are at the moment. So I'd like to introduce Carmel to you. Um, Carmel, thank you so much for, for all the time that you've put into this. And... I know that you're a technophobe and that you hate the idea of Zoom and all of that, but you were very brave and you took up my challenge to do this. But there again, knowing you and knowing how brave you are, a sort of person who can stand at the far side of, of um, a crater in Sicily where tourists are not allowed to go, forbidden. Um, you're the bravest person I know. So uh, it's no, no bother to you. So uh, uh, on the way out to the Skelly Rock and Kerry, a seascape, mm -hmm. the sea is... I suppose difficult enough to paint and you'll have your own individual way of looking at something and seeing it. I would look at the sea for an awfully long time and then paint because it's moving all the time, it's changing all the same. Same with the sky, same with light on mountains. Look yeah. hard at it, get the feeling of it and paint it. But looking back in 10 minutes, the sun will have moved or a cloud will have moved. So you have to be prepared for that. Yes, they're yes. all landscapes that we pass by there, mostly Kerry, Cliffs of Moher. Um, That's fabulous. Loud, go close yes. enough to those now, no, you wouldn't want to. That's, they were talking about bogs on the radio this morning. Mm -hmm. That's a bog hole with a, a little mound of turf at the side of it. And we're not going to see too many of those now with the new changes on the bogs. But the bog is lovely and very interesting. Mm -hmm. That's uh, up of the mountain in, in Kerry and very dark day but there's a shaft of sunlight coming through the space and picking out this little cottage and, and the surrounding area. So those are the sort of things you look for. Skelly, rock, island, another bog hole. The colour could be um, Italian but it isn't. It's a uh, a winter bog in the west of Ireland <clears throat> and the red, it gets red. Uh, one of the birds that I painted, a wounded bird, you see these birds lying on their own, mm. <laughs> so, you know, run over by traffic or whatever. But I painted that with no, no particular message, but a lot of people hated it and a lot of people related to it as this bird getting the courage to get up and fly into the light. But, um, so all these things, you don't have to go very far. I, 
you don't have to go away to paint you, uh, a balcony, a back garden. There's all, always something. Mm. Still life is good. I didn't like it, but I did. Uh, I did it when I was in NCAD, and it's it's very good discipline. You learn a lot about composition from painting a still life. So you can do that. So there isn't really an excuse. You don't have to go far away to get your subject better. Right. And Carmel, can um, I ask you, I know it's, it's probably something that, that every artist was always asked, do, do you have any particular artists who have had an influence on you over the years? Did I what? That you've had an, or been influenced by over the years? No, you try, I try not to be. Yeah, you, know, you like so many things. It's like, it's, it's like when I was doing art history. At one stage, I absolutely loved the Byzantine art. Then I hated some other uh, um, Flemish art. Then you go back and think, well, no. And I move around all the time, which is, <laughs> I, it's good and it's bad. But people, I used to try not to be too interested because I didn't want to be too influenced. You want your own yeah. thing. Everybody, everybody painting eventually should want their own mark on the painting and not to be very like anybody else. So, you know, people are copying all the time. My stuff is copied all the time, which I don't like, but what can I do about it? Not do, do you recommend that <clears throat> artists starting out now, and we'd have a few of them watch, watching in here, that they pick a subject like you did with volcanoes, uh, which is you know fairly unique, and and yet you you studied it in such depth um, that you beca it became synonymous with you. Um, do, would you recommend that people try and do that? That they find some subject and just sort of master it, just keep at it. Yeah, but you do it for yourself. Painting is for yourself. Remember, yes, and, and, and it's the one thing I suppose in in life, <laughs> and that's for yourself. <laughs> synonymous with volcanoes. That's funny. There was a a, a chimney fire in one of the houses in the lane here and smoke was billowing out and parallel to Wellington Road. But this guy in Wellington Road came out and looked and said, I think that's the, the, the artist who paints the volcanoes. <laughs> <laughs> Set the house on fire. Um, yeah, you can, you can pick a subject and, and it, it can be a good thing, but you need to know when it's come to an end. I would have said long ago that I had finished with the volcanoes. Mm. And then I was in Rome with an exhibition and I saw uh, that Mount Etna was covered in snow and the, the lava was coming down through the snow. Mm -hmm. And that was a whole new dimension. So I went back uh, and then started another series with that. Is that what so, we're looking at now, Carmel? It's what? Is that what we're looking at now? Yes. Yes, yes, very good. And it was fascinating because it's almost surreal to see uh, the, the the variety of color and then covered in snow. It's just fascinating. Yes. So it's changing all the time. The the recent erection, the, uh, the recent uh, that blew the top mm -hmm. of the uh, of the volcano with all it, 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 that that top didn't exist anymore. So. Every time there's an eruption, there's a change in the landscape, if it's a serious one. Yes. Sometimes it's nothing. It's just a surge of the lava. Mm -hmm. And at what point did you venture in towards into, into making glass? Was it, was it sort of after well, that? Well, I didn't, I didn't decide that. I, that mm. was an invitation from Europe, uh, from the EU to, I don't know where it came from, uh, for an one artist from each of the European countries to mm -hmm. collaborate with the foundation in, in Venice. Yes. So uh, I d never had anything to do with making glass. Mm -hmm. And I suppose it was a case of fools rushing in, but I thought, oh, yeah, that'd be nice. Well, nice it wasn't, interesting it was. And then <laughs> I was there, I, back and by for the last... 20 years, that's an exhibition in Venice there. Yeah. And, um, but working in the furnace is terribly difficult. But that's the furnace, it's huge. Yes. The team would be the last master in the blue shirt. That's the last master. And then there are three men, 
-hmm. because it takes that to lift a piece in and out of the furnace, which ha is happening all the time. You see it yeah. there at the end of a long pole. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, 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 it starts off with a small little ball of glass that you gather up in the furnace and then it builds up. Yeah, I'm so hoping it's slow, I'm, it's slow and tedious. Yeah, I'm going to flick through some of these because I know there's a video here and I think it'll be interesting because it shows more of the process that you go through. Um, yeah. So I think that'd be nice. This is a beauty, absolute beautiful one here. So do you start by, by making sketches of, of, of uh, yeah. the birds? There was a, there was a, then it's up to the master glass maker to, to interpret your, um, your, your design while you're watching and giving direction. No, you have to, no, you have to participate. You're part of it. You yes. know, in the beginning, glass is very heavy. I couldn't pull the glass uh, after a certain stage. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to leave that to the glass master. But you're there to say whatever way you, you know, it's, you can move it. For instance, you can have the wings flat or high. You can move, move things. And this is the chewing and throwing of it all. It takes a whole day. Sure. Uh, but a, um, essentially, yes, I would have a, a, a sketch. There was one on the wall of the, of the studio down there. And the sketch would be, um, blown up to a bigger size and put up on the wall in the in the furnace and then you write up your colors you, you you've all that preparation done before you start yes. the furnace starts at seven in the morning and you're ready to go then so you're not fiddling around with the drawing at that stage that's that's meant to be done and, and you start with that okay but, um, um, <clears throat> i think the video must be under the sheila the gigs is it <coughs> the, oh no um, sorry it's, it's here i beg your pardon <clears throat> I'll have, let me go back for a second, sorry. Oh, maybe not, hold on. I'll just see what these are. Oh yes, that's the one, that's the Casher one. That's the Casher one, no, so it's back, it's it's under Fantasy Birds, but it's... Yeah, that was, um, that's down in the Casher Palace Hotel, which has now been refurbished, but a, um, it was on the wall outside, the stone of that one. Yes. These are all drawings from the stone of the Sheila and the Gig, the old Irish medieval, uh, when women were the rulers, it was a matriarchal society in the Celtic church. And, well, it's um, coming back to that now, Carmel, isn't it? Sorry? I said it's coming back to that. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> now, they threw Carmel. them all out. That's how they all got thrown out. When the uh, Christian church came in and... Yes. They said they were pornographic images. They were a bit, but the, for the further time, they they were um, fertility symbols and mm -hmm. there were luck symbols. There were the whole history of the shield again. Maureen Concanon wrote an article in one of my books, and it sums it up. It's great to get to know what it's about. The yes. guy in the black jacket is the king of Murano, in case you ever want yep. to meet him. Well, I'm going to. I'm going to, I'm so going to play this now, Carmel. Animation. Sorry? I'm going to play this now, and there's no real talking in it, and the sort of noises and stuff. So I'd be grateful if you could talk through it and explain what's ha what's happening. And I'll, I'll start to play this, and I'll make it larger so that people can see it quite well. Okay. What if I if I say what's happening here? Yeah, no, no, no. I'm, I'm going to play the video. Okay. okay. And and if you just talk through it, what's what's happening at what stage and so on. All right. Please. Yeah, that's the glass master in the blue shirt. Yeah. And yeah. There he is again. He sits at that sort of desk, for want of mm -hmm. a better word. <clears throat> and the, the, the men there um, bring the glass back and by. The furnace is there on your right hand side. There's several furnaces. And yes. the glass will be on a rod. And if I want to pick up more glass, you go back to the furnace, twirl it around in the molten glass and come back. Then that's it going in and out of the, because you have to keep the heat to keep the glass mobile. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now that's terribly heavy to handle. And the tools you see there, they're big, heavy iron tongs and scissors and that. So I, I, I would not be able to handle that. He's very strong and he needs his two hands to cut into the glass. Yes. So 
it keeps going. That's the wing of a bird. Mm-hmm. And, and Carmel, how do they, how do they introduce color? Because well, that's this all done is... beforehand. That's the secret yeah. of the ferns. The, 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 I decide the color. Yes. They have it ready for me then that morning. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> but everything looks red while you're working because it's hot. Of course. Yes. Well, the color is very important, and the Venetian color. There's a room there. It's like um, it's a little box room, and there are shelves from ceiling to floor. And on one from ceiling to floor will be the different reds, mm-hmm. and then the different blues, all the different colors. Magic. It's wonderful color. I can imagine. Yes. But these people are working, they're learning that that the dust master is a very important person because you can't train in a few weeks or a few years. You know, these people have worked all their lives. Yes. And it takes, it takes Probably, probably generations as well, I say. Oh, yes. <laughs> but there are, this fact, this foundation is art class. Mm. There, there are furnaces, you know, Murano. So would lots they of deal with artists only? Sorry? Would they deal yeah, with mostly, artists only? Yes. Yeah, yes. artists from around the world. You, you, I can go there now again, but you have to be invited there in the first place. Yes, yes. And, um, and presumably um, it's a very expensive operation. Yeah. It's a, oh, would they charge a sort of an hourly rate or what? About an hour. It's about... I think it's probably now about a thousand euro an hour. I'm sure it is, yeah. So you don't need to make mistakes there. Too right. But when you see what's involved, like it's a tradition going back to 1200 or 1300. Yes. And and uh, when you see the amount of work involved in producing a piece of glass, it's a huge, oh. huge amount of work. So you've got a lot of discussion going on there all the time. Yeah, well, nearly all the time. Um, the, uh, the last master is the expert man, but you, if I had two, two options on a piece, yes, and I asked, no, it's what the artist wants. And, you know, nobody will take responsibility to say, I think that one is better. Mm. You know, say with the, the angle of a wing of the bird or something like that. No, you make the decisions yourself and the, that, that will be carried out exactly. Right. But cutting the glass like that is enormously um, difficult. Yeah. Like it looks easy there, but it's, it's heavy. It's so heavy. Yes. And, back into and the, the weight going, going in and out of the, of the furnace. When the piece is finished, it takes three men. The piece goes in at the end of a rod and there's a, a, a cross one then to balance it. I'm going to move this on a wee bit, Carmel, because I want to allow time for Q&As. It's tough work. Those men work hard all year round. I mean, I'm only there for a couple of weeks when I go, but they're, you know, in that. And the fumes that come off those colours are poisonous cadmium colours or all kinds of toxins so that is amazing yeah and it's still very pliable at this stage is it you know they can move the wings or yeah well you have to keep it mobile he he has a, a flame there to keep it workable for as long as possible mm-hmm. then that that's on a kind of a hook there now yeah and he 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 will spin it and the wings will get into whatever position he's yeah. spinning and then i will say yes sir, keep them you know you say where exactly you want them you want yeah. them spread out you want them up so you watch there until you get that position and then he stops and that's that's the way it will be amazing isn't it but the bird is made in three parts of the body and then there's a wing and a wing and the wing is attached to the body when both pieces of glass are the exact same temperature. Otherwise, it won't it'll shatter. 
and uh, on that point, is, isn't, there, isn't there a sequence that goes through in terms of cooling down? Yeah, well, you have to keep, you, that's why the, the, if one wing was on the bird there, the other one is in the furnace because it has to be, the, ho the whole thing has to be in sync. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because the minute the glass meets the glass, it fuses. So it's long drawn out. You start at seven in the morning. You get there's a short hour break, and then and this is this is where he puts it into the cooling down thing. I think is it. Now it's going in there to cool. Yeah. And that piece, any any of those heavy pieces, they're big. Yeah. They'll take between three and five days to cool. So that goes in there, and he has to hold it there, does he? No, it's it locks. Does it? Okay. Yeah, when he puts it in, it, it locks. But yeah. the toing and froing, it's you know, it's it's pretty tedious, pretty tiring. Yes. And the heat of the furnace is incredible. Yes, I'm sure it is. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Um, Carmel, that 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 was just mind blowing, and it's just it's 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 so different than what we kind of almost expected of you um, when you talk about the visual arts and so on. But to see that in the detail was, was just magnificent. I'm quite sure there's some people who'd like to, to ask you a question. Uh, if so, could you unmute your, your microphone and uh, feel free to ask a question. Here's your chance. Don't be shy. Uh, Alan? Yeah. Yes, Morlin. Can, uh, can I ask Carmel, do they mould the body first, then the tail and then the wings? Or at what point is the tail drawn out from the body in the glass where glass work? Uh, well, there is no particular says. point. You start off with a you start off with a ball of glass. Uh, you, you take the rod over to the furnace that has the molten glass in it, and you pick up like you you put a spoon into honey. You pick up a you pick up the glass. And when you've got what you think is enough for the shape of the bird, for the size of the bird, then it goes over to the bench where you saw the last master and start to work on that, to pull it into a body shape. And as you go along, then you pull out the tail of the bird and into a flat shape. And then the last master, because I couldn't do this because it's too heavy, will cut into the flat shape for the feather shape. The same with the wing, cut into the glass shape. And that, that's that bit. Then the next thing, it go, the bird goes back into the furnace again and comes back to have a wing. Meanwhile, there's a, 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 another rod with enough glass on it to make a wing. So the same performance again, take out the flat shape and the glass master will cut into that and then it will be attached to the body of the bird mm -hmm. and so on with the head and everything else. And you reshape as you go along. That's why all the, the toing and froing back and by to the furnace takes place. Yes. Very good. Anybody else? Just to ask you. Sorry, can I just ask her, is there a type of bird she has in mind that she wants to emulate or does she just make up whatever type of bird she likes? Or is she, no, you know, I have two types of birds. <laughs> I have two types of birds. There, it, there, there, there are no birds in a volcano. It's not possible. But I was in, when I was painting in Lanzarote, uh, it's eerie, you know, you hear the wind, it's quite windy, but the sky was blue and was... Uh, the colour of the earth was lovely. It was, you know, you, you might think you were in Ireland, you might think you were in Rossby, but not a sound except the wind. And that's where I got the idea, I didn't implement it for a long time, of fantasy birds. Some of the birds I make are blue or green or coloured, and they're fantasy birds, and they live a kind of a, a, a charmed life in this... <laughs> mythical landscape. Now the red birds, that's a different thing. 
they are survivors. They are surviving in a volcanic mountain and the hardship of it. As are people, which I've seen when I was up there in Mount Etna, in the foothills, farm, little farms and people pulling the cool lava out of the earth to make a wall and to make a shield for a little plant to go in and tough, tough. So the, the red birds are the survivor trying to survive in a difficult situation, but they're not like any bird. Some of them look pretty ugly and that <laughs> purposely not like any particular bird. Okay, thank you. Carmen, have you made many? Have you made many of those birds? Oh, I would have. A lot of them, <laughs> a lot of them flew out of the country. <laughs> Did they literally? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you see, but I wouldn't be spending months uh, in, in the furnace. I would go over work for work for maybe two weeks, and then come back, and then go back again, and do. Uh, more work. It wasn't all birds. I did the, the Shield and the Gig series, but I've made a couple of other pieces as well. Yes. But um, yeah, I, I had the first time I, I showed those in Ireland was um, in the architecture gallery in in um, Mount Street, I think it is, or Merrion Square. Merrion Square, and, like and they did sell, they did, you know you took your chances because they're very, very expensive to make those, but so you think, well, well and good. Um, you, do, you go ahead and do it and hope for the best that you won't end up in the debtor's prison at the end of it all. <laughs> I know, yeah. Okay, Listen, has anybody else got any questions before we, we conclude? Just wondering, Alan, or yeah. Mark Carmel. Yeah, hi, uh, yeah, I just, I love your work, Carmel. That's the first thing to say. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and you've been a lifetime at it. So you're very, very experienced and you have wonderful um, travel uh, experiences as well. But if you were to do, to do uh, something like artistic sculptures in a furnace in Ireland, you know, if you were working on landscapes in Ireland and related it to maybe birds in Ireland or whatever. Uh, is there a furnace for that? I know there'd be stained glass studios, but would there be uh, an actual artistic sculptural uh, furnace for you in Ireland? Uh, to not, not, not for what you saw there. Yes. That, it's a different, that's, yeah. that's particular to yes. Venetian. Yes. And the methods of Venetian glass. Oh, there are glass furnaces, yes, of course. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't work in, in them because I don't, um, I don't do stained glass, for instance. Uh, that, that's the only glass I'm interested in. And that was accidentally. It happened to be an invitation yeah. that I got. I didn't set out to go there, you know. Yeah. But mm -hmm. um, uh, the furnaces that I... The, uh, in Brown Street, Leo, Leo Higgins, he's, he's very, he has a furnace in Brown Street and he did one, one time invite me to come and make a piece there, but not in glass, it would be in bronze or whatever, which I would like to do sometime. Very good. Any other questions? No, okay, all right. I'm sure a few will occur later on, but... Um... We can come back to it. There, were there any in writing there? Well, yeah, somebody asked, was, was your paint, painting stolen? Because um, you, you didn't come across particularly well the sound when you were talking about that painting uh, in your studio. Remember? The, the, the big pair one. of paintings you had and one of them was stolen. Oh, yeah. Did, oh, did you ever recover that? Was... Sorry? Did you ever recover that? No. Painting? A painting that size won't stay in the country if it's stolen. Yes. <laughs> so, so, the, so the police say. Yes. Uh, there's a market for it. Uh, yeah, a consignment of glass went missing one time. When I say a consignment, five mm. pieces of glass went missing one time as well. Really? And, and um, that was found in England. Yes. It, it, the boxes with each bird, the very big box with each bird, the, 
and they'd be on the pallet and the pallet would be covered over with that really strong uh, uh, plastic thing. Yes. And <clears throat> one of them came in to me and then there was a bank holiday weekend. So to structure this whole thing, it was a bank holiday weekend. So it was the, the Tuesday before I could get onto the company. And they said, no, nothing here. So the, the police trace that lasts from Venice, from Murano to Venice, Venice to Milan, Milan to London, London to Dublin. So it did come into Dublin. Mm. And then they, one piece was taken off the pallet and sent over to me and that took care of the bank holiday weekend <laughs> while I waited. So it, it just went missing. And it, when, when something like that goes missing, it, it's difficult to trace. Yes. Artwork is always difficult to trace. So they tell me, but anyway, this guy came over from the company and he was, I thought this is just a cosmetic exercise. He was photographing the box that the wood came in and the, the, where the plastic thing had been cut and all this. And he found, the, he found the other five pieces dotted around. Um, finally, they were in a, a, a company hub in England. So they were ready to go here and there. So he he was he was very good. I said, how could you possibly have identified it? And he said, I know a person, I know a man in each hub and I'll make him responsible to check everything in it. Yes. And it was pretty meticulous, you know, I thought the whole thing was gone. I know. But but he, he said an interesting thing, and, and, and people listening might be interested in this. If you lose something very valuable, say in a, say in a, in a hotel, hotel, and yeah. something very valuable goes missing, it will be in the building. It won't go anywhere else pro tem. Yes. It will be there so that it could have got caught up in, or thrown into a laundry basket or, or whatever, but it won't leave until the dust settles and then whoever stole it will take it out of there. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've heard that. Uh, I remember you talked to me about that. And that, yeah. that can happen in, in warehouses, so, uh, you know, transport warehouses, all sorts of things. Um, yeah. they're, they're sort of hidden away until the heat dies six months time. Yeah. And the next thing. Because that was all a period, of, uh, what I was telling you there, that was over a period of a couple of months. Yes. So um, it was going to be, it was never going to come back here. No, no, I know. Yeah. Um, we have a question from Alico. Are you having an exhibition any time? As while I'm looking at the photos of your paintings in your book, I would love to see the originals. Well, it depends on where they are. Mm -hmm. um, the original, I have, yes, original paintings here, but I, I mightn't have the specific, I, I might not, I, I probably haven't got the ones in the book there. Yeah. They would have gone into exhibitions. Or I, I usually hold some back. I don't put every last painting I have into the exhibition yes. for a, several reasons. One, a, a very crowded exhibition I don't like. Yeah. But secondly, I like to have something here I don't like. And by the way, for people who paint, I just want to give you a kind of a hint about something. When you're having an exhibition, don't leave yourself with nothing on your easel. It's terribly hard to come back immediately after an exhibition and put up a blank canvas and start to paint. That's very difficult. So have something that you've done a bit of work on or laid in the composition or something, something that you can come back to. Yeah. And I found that after years, mind you, I found that very helpful to, to, to think in that way. Yes, yes. Very have good. something yeah. going. Sound, sound advice. Okay, Carmel, thank you again so much. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm delighted you did so well on your Zoom and you didn't press any of the wrong buttons. I wonder. Uh, you were very good. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, on behalf of everyone, there's some lovely comments coming in as well, which are, you may or may not be able to see. Um, but we are most, most grateful for your time and for the insight into all the work in your life and the wonderful things you've accomplished. Uh, it's, it's truly extraordinary and very, very informative. And we are called The Artist Well, and you've certainly been a source of inspiration to us. And um, we really appreciate it. So 
thank you, Carmen, on behalf of all of us. Well, all. thank you very much, Alan, and thank you all very much. And if somebody does want to come to my studio, they're welcome to come. I'll show them what I have. Um, I, I, can't, I can't say, even if I look through my book, I might not know which painting I have still, but it's not a problem. So they can contact you. And um, I hope you weren't too... You see, when you're not interested in volcanoes, it might have been very, it might have been very boring. You know, or glass, it might be very boring to my talking about it. So. I don't think anyone would, would, would accuse you of that. No, definitely not. Okay, guys, listen, thank you so much for, for tuning in. Uh, we're trying to keep it within an hour, which we've done. It's just after 11 o'clock. And I look forward to seeing you next week. And as usual, I don't know what's going to happen next week. So it's all a bit of a surprise, but I let the cat out of the bag maybe next Wednesday or Thursday, uh, assuming that I have, I have somebody to, um, to share with you. So thanks again, Carmel, and thank you all for watching. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Cheerio, everybody. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you very much.